Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Coding Lifestyle for you. In this video, we are going to learn how to build this project step by step. So let's get started. Make sure Python interpreter is installed in your system. If not, go to this website python.org and click on this download button. Once it is downloaded, just run the setup and install it. After installing Python interpreter, you also need to install one IDE which will help you to write your code and run your code at the same place. So click on this download button and install it on your PC. After that, open your PyCharm, click on this file, select new project, give a project folder name here, master typing and click on this create button. I want to open this project on a new window, so I'll select new window here. So this virtual environment is getting created here. Once it is completed, just right click on this folder name, go to new and select python file. Give a python file name here, I'll go with main and hit enter. So our python file is created in which we will be writing our code. So firstly, we'll have to import tkinter. So from tkinter, import asterisk this tk enter is a module which helps you to create graphical user interface it has lots of classes and methods which helps us to easily create gui so this line means that we are importing all the classes and methods of tk enter module now we can easily create our window with the help of tk class which is present inside this tk enter module. So I am going to write tk. This is a class and I have to create object of this tk class. So I will give a object variable name as root. With this line your window is created. But you will not be able to see this window unless you keep this window on a loop. So that you can continuously see that window. So I'll have to write root object name dot main loop method. This main loop method is a part of this TK class is inside this TK class. So we can access this main loop method with the help of this object variable root. Okay. Once you use this main loop method, now you will be able to see the window. If I right click and run main, you can see our GUI window is created. Okay. Now let's change the width and the height of this window. For that I'm going to use another method of this TK class which is known as geometry. This helps you to provide width and the height to your window. So the width and the height has to be provided in the form of a string. The width that I'm going to take is 940. X735 is the height. Now from X axis at what distance you want your window to appear. I want at 200 distance from the x axis and from y axis at a distance of 10. Let's see. Now you can see this is the width 940. This is the height 735. From x axis the distance is 200 and from y axis the distance is 10. Now I want to disable this maximize button so that our window size cannot be increased and also this drag option so that nobody can drag this window and change the size of it. So I'm going to use another method of this TK class root.resizable and here I have to pass 0, 0, 0 for the width and 0 for the height. So it means I don't want any changes in the width in the same way I don't want any changes in the height. So this will simply disable the maximize button. Let's see. Now you can see the maximize button is disabled and you will not be able to drag this window to change its size. After creating the window, now we need to create this title label at the top. Okay, so this title label is inside a frame. So firstly, we will be creating a frame. Okay, on that frame, we will be adding this title label. So frame is a container in which we can add labels or buttons or text areas or entry fields. So I'm going to create a main frame. 
and I will be using a frame class to create this frame. Now where I want this frame, I want this frame on my root window. After creating the frame, now we have to add this frame on our window. So I'm going to use main frame object variable dot grid method. This will help you to add your frame on this root window. Here you have to mention row and the column value. But if you don't mention any row and the column value, so by default the row will be zero and the column will also be zero here. So if I run this, still you will not be able to see this frame. The reason is we have not added anything inside this frame and also we have not provided any width or the height to this frame. If I provide some width, suppose 50 and the height 30 and let's change the background color so that you can see this frame and now if i run this you can see the frame is created here okay so the frame is at this position if you will not provide any width and the height the frame will reside at this position okay once you will start adding things inside this frame the size of the frame will automatically increase so i will not add width and the height to it once i will start adding things inside this main frame its size will automatically increase now we have a window and on top of the window we have this main frame okay and inside this main frame i'm going to create another frame which is a title frame so i'm going to use a frame class to create this frame and this title frame is going to be inside this main frame so i'll pass main frame here now let's grid this frame so title frame dot grid method and here the row value will be zero and the column will also be zero why row and the column is zero here because this title frame is the first thing getting added inside this main frame okay so there is nothing inside this main frame and we are adding this title frame so it has to be at row zero and column zero only if you don't mention row 0 and column 0, still this will be taken as row 0 and the column 0 like here. Now inside this title frame, I am going to add a title label where the text will be master typing. So I am going to create a title label and I am going to use a label class to create this title label. This label will be inside this title frame. After that text will be master typing after creating this title label now we have to mention at which position we want to add this title label inside this title frame so i'm going to use title label object dot grid method since this title label is the first thing getting added inside this title frame so this will also be at row zero and the column will also be zero here if I run now, you can see we are getting a title label inside a title frame and that title frame is inside a main frame and that main frame is on this window. Now let's provide some font to this text. So I'm going to use font keyword argument. Here firstly we will have to mention a style. So I'm going to use Algerian style. After that the size of the text will be 28 and I'll make that bold. Let's see. You can see styling and the text size is changed. Now let's add a background color to this label and the text color. So background color name is golden rod 3 rod 3 and the foreground color the text color will be white. Now let's provide some width so that this label can fill this x-axis so here i'm going to write width equals to 38 let's see the label is a stretch to 38 width now let's add a little border to our main frame and a background color to our title frame so come inside this main frame and here write bd for border equals to 4 then inside this title frame bg equals to orange now if i run you can see we got a little border on the main frame 
but we are not able to see the orange color of our title frame. So let's provide some padding to this title label. So inside this grid method, here we can provide some vertical padding of 5 pixels. If I run now, you can see now we are able to see the background color of our title frame. What is this pad Y? Pad Y is the little vertical space of 5 pixels that I have provided here. If I provide background color to our main frame, you will be able to see a main frame also. So just for test, let me show you BG equals to blue. If I run now, you can see background color of our main frame. On top of that, we have our title frame of orange color. And on that, we have a title label of golden rod 3 color. Let's remove this background color of our main frame and let's provide some border to our title label so that it can be thicker and this space can be consumed. Let's remove this background color and let's add a border of 10. If I run now, yeah, this is fine. Now let's create another frame on which we will be adding this paragraph. So just after this title label, I'm going to give a paragraph frame name to this frame. Now where we want this frame, we want this frame inside this main frame. Earlier we added this title frame inside this main frame and now we are going to add this paragraph frame. So I'm going to write main frame here. Now let's create this so that it can be positioned on the screen. Since this paragraph frame is the second thing getting added inside this main frame. Earlier we added this title frame at row 0 column 0. This time this frame has to be at row 1 and column will still be 0. I hope you understood. Just after this title frame I am adding this paragraph frame. Now let's create a paragraph list. Inside this list, let's add different paragraphs. Since we want to display a new paragraph each time a user runs the code. So you can download the source code from the description and from there you can copy the paragraph list. Or you can google different paragraphs of your choice of around 150 words. So I have copied and I will be pasting it here. You can see I have copied these 6 or 7 paragraphs from the source code. Each paragraph is separated by comma here. Now we want to randomly display the paragraphs on our label. So we will be using random module here. So I am going to import at the top here. Import random. Once you import this module, now you can use a method of this random module. So random dot shuffle. And this helps you to shuffle a list. So I am going to pass here paragraph list. And this list will be shuffled means if at index 0 we have this paragraph. Once this shuffle method is executed, next time at index 0 we will have a different paragraph. Maybe this one or this one. Okay, it will be random. So each time you will run your code, this paragraph list will have a different paragraph at index 0. And in the same way at other indexes. Let's create a label paragraph where we will be adding different paragraphs and I'll be using a label class to create this paragraph where I want this label paragraph I want this inside this paragraph frame okay so I'll pass here paragraph frame after that we have to add text for this label so text will be nothing but a paragraph from this paragraph list and each time we want to display a new paragraph so I'll pass here paragraph list at index 0 as I told you the shuffle method will simply shuffle this list every time you run the code and at index 0 every time you will get a different paragraph and that different paragraph will be added on this label paragraph our label is created now we have to grid this so I'll write label paragraph dot grid method and since inside this paragraph frame, 
this is the first thing we are adding so it has to be at row 0 and column will also be 0 okay because this is the first thing getting added inside this paragraph frame let's see here you can see we are getting a paragraph but this is in a single line only we want the paragraph in multiple lines so we'll pass a wrap length keyword argument here and we'll pass 912 pixels so after completing 912 pixels the words will start moving to a new line if i run now now you can see we are getting the paragraph like this now i want to see the text from the left hand side and not from the center i'll pass here justify keyword argument and the value will be left let's see now you can see each line is starting from the left hand side now let's increase the font size of this text so i'll use font keyword argument here and the style that i'm going to use is arial size will be 14 and it will be bold let's see you can see our paragraph is looking fine here now after adding the paragraph we have to add this text area again firstly i'll be creating text area frame and inside this frame i will be adding the text area so i'm going to use a frame class to create this frame and this frame will again be inside a main frame okay and let's grid this text area frame dot grid method can you guess where i will be gridding this text area frame till now inside this main frame i have added this title frame at row 0 column 0 okay after that i have added this paragraph frame at row 1 and column 0 and next thing is this text area frame so it has to be at row 2 and column will again be 0 here after creating this frame now we can add a text area inside this frame so i'm going to use a text class to create text area and i'm going to create object of it text area where i want this text area i have to mention that text area frame and now let's grid this so that we are able to see this text area dot grid method and it has to be at row 0 and column 0 why because this text area is the first thing getting added inside this text area frame you can see we got a text area here we can type the text inside this text area okay so let's provide some font to this text so I'm going to use font keyword argument, style will be Arial, size will be 12 and it will be bold. If I run now, now you can see the size is changed to 12. After that, let's fix the width and the height of this text area. I'm going to provide 100 width and the height will be 7. You can use different values of your choice. Let's see. You can see this is how it looks now let's provide some border to this text area and styling to it so i'm going to use bd keyword argument for border equals to 4 and then relief for styling and the value will be groove in capitals let's see see this is how our border looks like this is groove styling now if i type some word here now if i move it at the end of this text area you will see each character will go to a new line instead of each word right what i want each word should go to a new line so i'll pass another keyword argument wrap and i'll give the value as word let's see if i type some word here and move it at the end of this text area you can see now each word is going to a new line instead of each character now at the start i want to disable this text area so that nobody can type inside it so here i'm going to provide a state equals to disabled okay so you will not be able to type anything inside it unless you make the state back to normal after creating this text area 
Now we have to create these labels, elapsed time, remaining time, word per minute, accuracy, total words and wrong words. Let's see. Again, I'm going to create a frame and inside that frame, I will be adding those labels. So I'm going to give a name frame output and I'm going to use a frame class to create this frame. And again, this frame will be inside my main frame. Now I have to grid this frame. So frame output dot grid method. Now where we have to grid this at row two column zero, we added this text area frame. So this frame output has to be at row three and column will still be zero here because we want this frame just below this text area frame. So let's create our first label elapsed time label and we'll be using a label class to create this label and this label will be inside this frame output okay then the text will be elapsed time then I have to provide font to this text the styling that I'm going to use is the Homer the size will be 12 and I'll make it bold let's see we are not able to see the label because we have just created it and we have not gridded it so i'll write elapsed time label dot grid method and where this label has to be gridded since this is the first label getting added inside this frame output so this will be at row zero and column will also be zero here let's run so we got this label here now we need to change the color of this elapsed time label to red and after that we have to create elapsed timer label where we will be showing the timer so i'll change the text color to red let's see yeah this is fine now let's create a timer label just next to this elapsed time label so i'll simply copy this label from here and i will paste it and now i will change this object variable name from time to timer after that this text will also change to zero because initially the text will be zero and the foreground color i will change it to black so by default the color is black now the row will be same as this elapsed time label because i want it in the same line only the column value will change here it will be changed to one let's see this is how it looks after this we have to create remaining time label and the timer so i'm going to paste the label again and instead of elapsed time this time it will change to remaining time label and with the help of alt key you can place multiple cursors at the same time now we need to change this elapsed time text to remaining time remaining time font will remain same text color will remain same row value will also be zero only the column will change to two i hope you have noticed each time we are running this code and we are getting a different paragraph now let's create a remaining timer label where we will show our time again i'll copy this one and i will paste it here i'll change elapsed timer to remaining timer label okay and the text will initially be zero here also row will also be zero and the column will be changed to three let's see instead of zero remaining timer label will have a value of 60 because initially it will be 60 and it will decrease by one and this elapsed time will be increased by one now we have to create this wpm label it stands for words per minute so I'm going to copy a label from here and I will paste here and this elapsed time label will be changed to WPM label words per minute label and then the text will also change to WPM after that column will only change row will remain same column will be 4 after this remaining timer label we want this WPM label so it will be 4 here right now let's create wpm count label where we will show how many words per minute you have typed 
so i'll copy this label and i will paste it here and the object variable will be changed to word per minute count label and the text initially will be 0 only the column value will change to 5 and for this label i don't want to give any text color so i'll remove it by default the color will be black now you can see we got this wpm label and this wpm count label let's provide a little space between these labels You have to press ALT key and mouse left button to place multiple cursors and I will simply provide padding. So pad X because I want to provide horizontal spacing. So I'll use pad X here and the value will be 5. Let's see. Yeah, so I got a little spacing between these labels now. Next is total words and wrong words label. Again, I will copy this label from here and I will paste it here. This will be instead of WPM label. Now it will be total words label. And the text will change to total words. Okay, row number will be zero only. Column will change to six. After that, we have to create total words count label. So I'll paste again. This time this will be total words underscore count label. Initially, the text will be zero and I will not provide any text color to this label. Row will be zero, column will change to seven and there will be some horizontal padding. Let's run. You can see we got this total words label here. After that, we have to create wrong words label. So I'll copy this total words label from here and I will paste here. And instead of total words label, this time it will be wrong words label. And the text will also change to wrong words. Okay, row will remain same, column will change to eight. After that, we have to create wrong words count label. So I'll simply copy from here and I'll paste here. So this one will be wrong words count label and the text will be zero here. Only the column value will change to nine. Let's see. Now, just after these labels, we have to create these three buttons here. And if you notice this reset button is disabled in the starting. Again, firstly, we will create a frame and inside that frame, we will be adding these three buttons. So let's create a buttons frame. And we'll be using a frame class to create this frame. Again, this frame will be in my main frame. Now we have to grid this buttons frame and where we will be grading it. If you see, frame output frame was at row 3 column 0 so this has to be at row 4 and column will be 0 button frame dot grid method row will be 4 and column will be 0 now let's add buttons inside this frame so firstly i'll be creating a start button and i'll be using a button class and this button will be inside this button's frame. The text on this button will be start. Now let's grid it so that we are able to see this button dot grid method. And since this button is the first thing getting added inside this button's frame, so it will be at row zero and column will also be zero. Let's see. You can see we got this start button over here. After this start button, we have to create reset button and then the exit button. So I'll simply copy this start button from here and I'll paste here. And now I'll change the object variable names. From a start, this one will be reset button. The text will also change to reset. 
okay and this one will be exit button so the object variable name will become exit button and then the text will be exit and we also have to change the column value and the row value will remain same because it has to be in the same line so here the column will become one and this one will become two let's see you can see we got these three buttons over here but those buttons do not look like this so here i have applied a theme so let's apply a theme on those three buttons also to apply themes we have to install one external module so open your terminal and type pip install ttk themes make sure you write correct spelling and hit enter it is getting downloaded once the downloading is complete now we have to import this so at the top we'll write import ttk themes after importing this line we have to change this tk class to themed tk class and we can access that class with the help of this module ttk themes dot themed tk okay so that tk class and this themed tk class are similar it's just that if you want to apply theme you have to replace that class with this themed tk class it also contains all the methods which were present in that tk class so all these geometry resizable are present in this themed tk class as well now we have to get the theme so we'll write root object variable dot get theme method and after that we have to set the theme root dot set theme and here we need to mention the name of the theme that we are going to apply on the buttons open your web browser type ttk themes and hit enter go to this website ttk themes dot read the docs dot io here are all the themes that you can apply on those buttons you can apply breeze clear looks elegance all these some works for windows some works for linux so the one that i have used in my original project is this elegance style so i'm going to use this one only coming back to the code here i'll mention elegance style if i run at this stage you will not be able to see any changes because we have just set the theme but we have not applied this theme on our buttons so to apply the theme we have to import another module from tk enter import ttk this helps you to apply themes on your buttons so coming back to the buttons so on whichever buttons you want to apply the theme just write ttk dot button that's it here also ttk dot and the same way here also ttk dot let's run oh this is not that theme that i have applied on the original project i made a mistake i have not applied this elegance instead of that i have applied this radiance on my button so i'll be using this one only so i'll change here from elegance it will be radiance and now if i run it again you can see we got the same buttons as we have in our original project and when i'm bringing my mouse pointer the color is changing to orange here this is the effect of the theme now i want to provide little spacing between these three buttons horizontal spacing again we will be using padx so here inside this grid method i'll mention padx equals to 10 let's see yeah this is fine now let's disable this reset button in the starting it is disabled so here inside this reset button I will use state keyword argument and I'll pass value as disabled. Let's run. You can see our reset button is now disabled. If you guys noticed, I missed accuracy label here. We need to add accuracy label just like we have it here. You can see here we have this in between this words per minute and total words label. But in our project, I will be adding that at the last here. So just after this wrong words count label, 
I will copy this label from here and I will paste it here. Now I will change this label to accuracy label. Accuracy label. The text will be changed to accuracy. Row number will remain same. The column will change to 10. After that, we have to create accuracy percent label where we will be showing the percentage value. So I'll paste the label again and this time this one will be accuracy percentage label. Accuracy percent label and initially the value will be zero and I will remove the foreground color because I want black color and then the column will change to 11. Row will remain same. Let's see. Here we are getting this accuracy label. In the next video, we will see how we can create keyboard over here and also the functionality of these buttons. Right now, nothing is happening when I'm clicking on these buttons. If you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment section. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.